So it looks like the Trump Organization is almost certainly going to be criminally indicted by the Manhattan District Attorney's Office. And trust me when I say, folks, the consequences of that are enormous. Let's talk about that. Because justice matters. Hey all, Glenn Kirshner here. So it looks like the Trump Organization will actually be criminally indicted by the New York District Attorney's Office in Manhattan. Let's take a stroll together through the consequences of a criminal indictment of the Trump Organization. So it was first reported out by the New York Times, and here's the headline, Trump Organization could face criminal charges in DA inquiry an indictment of the Trump Organization could mark the first criminal charges to emerge from an investigation by the Manhattan District Attorney into Donald J. Trump and his business dealings. Or, as CNN succinctly reported, Trump Organization could face criminal charges in New York as soon as next week. And importantly, folks, this was confirmed by lawyers for Donald Trump and the Trump Organization. They met with prosecutors from the Manhattan District Attorney's Office, and they were put on notice that it looks like a criminal indictment of the Trump Organization is imminent. So what are the consequences of a criminal indictment of the Trump Organization? I think of the consequences in three separate buckets. The direct consequences, the collateral consequences, and most importantly, the atmospheric consequences. What are the direct consequences? Well, if the Trump Organization is indicted and ends up being convicted either by pleading guilty or going to trial and being convicted by a jury, the direct consequences will be pretty substantial. They could be huge fines and penalties and the financial hit to the Trump Organization as a result of the direct consequences could be huge. Let's talk about the collateral consequences. These are kind of the business consequences. Clients will likely run for the hills, will not do business with the Trump Organization any longer. Contracts will be canceled. Banks and financial institutions will no longer loan money to Donald Trump or his organization trying to prop it up and keep it running. So the collateral consequences, the business consequences, will likely also be enormous. And I would add, there was a loosely similar circumstance back in the early 2000s. If you remember the Enron scandal, when the Arthur Anderson accounting firm was criminally indicted, the firm was convicted of obstructing justice and it ended up folding. So the collateral consequences would probably involve the Trump Organization folding. But here's what I think are potentially the most important consequences. The atmospheric consequences. What do I mean by that? Well, if the Trump Organization, let's face it, the Trump Organization is Donald Trump. It's controlled 100% by Donald Trump. If it is criminally indicted, that will break this atmospheric barrier that seems to have been holding everything in place and seems to have been preventing any jurisdiction from indicting Donald Trump. If the Trump Organization is indicted, then I suspect you're going to see other jurisdictions that are criminally investigating Donald Trump reassess whether it's time to move out and charge Donald Trump criminally for the crimes he committed in those jurisdictions. For example, the Fulton County, Georgia District Attorney Fannie Willis has been investigating Donald Trump for violations, potential violations, of Georgia election laws. 
And that crime was captured on a recorded telephone conversation where Donald Trump is saying, somebody just give me around 11,000 votes so I can wrongfully be declared the winner of the election in Georgia. That's a crime ready for the indicting. Remember, federally, we have multiple counts of obstructing justice that Bob Mueller documented in volume two of the Mueller report. They are ready for the indicting. All of the evidence is there. It was investigated. The evidence was preserved by Mueller's team. Why? Because Bob Mueller famously testified that once Donald Trump leaves office, he can be indicted for these crimes. That doesn't even begin to talk about Trump's bribery and extortion of President Zelensky, Trump's obstructing congressional inquiries by instructing all of his executive branch officials do not comply with lawfully issued congressional subpoenas. It doesn't address his witness tampering of Ambassador Marie Yovanovitch. It doesn't address the hundreds of thousands of avoidable COVID deaths for which Donald Trump has criminal responsibility. And not just Donald Trump. But it's not surprising that no prosecutor's office, whether New York, Georgia, the feds, other offices that might be investigating Donald Trump's crimes, wants to be the first out of the chute to indict a former president because it's never been done before. So understandably, there is some trepidation, I'm sure, when these prosecutors are trying to decide when and if the moment is right to indict Donald Trump. But an atmospheric barrier will be broken if the New York district attorneys, and more specifically the grand jury sitting in New York that has been impaneled to investigate the Trump organization and all crimes potentially committed by Donald Trump, Alan Weisselberg, and presumably Ivanka and Jared and Don Jr. and Eric and anybody else who's part of the Trump organization, if they indict, then I have a feeling lots of other prosecutors will pretty quickly get into the Donald Trump indictment game. Couple other things. With respect to an indictment against the Trump organization, if, as the reporting indicates, we see one this, this coming week, an indictment against the Trump organization does not preclude indictments against Donald Trump, Alan Weisselberg, and the other members of the organization. These are not mutually exclusive propositions. In fact, indicting the Trump organization could be step one in a multi-step process that sees other indictments handed down by the grand jury against Donald Trump and others. So yes, this could just be the, the tip of the iceberg or maybe the tip of the Weisselberg. Bad joke. Um, so stay tuned because there is more to come. And I do feel like the snowball of justice is gathering weight and speed and momentum, and it's rolling in the right direction. Um, so we'll stay tuned. We will be watching every day this coming week to see when and if that indictment against the Trump organization is ultimately issued. And um, then, folks, I think we're going to see a whole lot of other jurisdictions um, beginning to hold Donald Trump accountable for his crimes because justice matters. And we're going to get there, folks. We're going to get there. As always, please stay safe. Please stay tuned. And I look forward to talking with you all again tomorrow.